it's it's so good super super exciting to connect with everyone here i'm so glad because i've been i've been anticipating this moment since um since december and when to actually share this program with me so i'm actually glad uh, i can see everyone there and i'm so glad um i don't know if for those who might be comfortable with like um turning on their videos i feel like it's just really nice to see how we all look um, during international conferences like this because it makes us know like um experience our diversity and so many things that we share together so before before i proceed and before we get to talking about the things that we are going to be talking about today i just want to know if everyone can hear me so if you can hear me so let's just like a thumbs up all right great all right great all right great so i just wanted to be sure if everyone could hear me all right great so my name is Eriolu Adinka. so i'm joining this call from lagos nigeria nigeria is in africa um, it's a country in africa for those who might be wondering so uh, we are the largest um, black um, nation in africa so we have about 200 million people in the country where i'm from so today we'll be talking about how we young people design the future of education because i think it's a very important conversation that we should have because um so far young people have been i've seen it's an irony but in this part of the world people try to design programs for young people and there are no young people in the committees designing them so you so you see things like oh the future of education or the future of learning and you check the committee of designers or you check the team of people designing this future of education and future of learning and you don't see any young person and it makes you wonder who, who they are designing this for because it's actually very funny as to how even sometimes they have reduced this whole thing to even thinking that oh let's select student ambassadors that would represent and speak for young people which are actually which we have actually realized that so far selecting and electing student ambassadors haven't really worked student representatives haven't really worked because when a student representative is talking most times they just only speak based on their experience. They don't speak for other young people. You only speak for your shared experience. So uh, basically, this particular process, it's like a workshop design, is really going to help us is to how we young people design the future of education. So that's basically what we are trying to look at. So how will young people design this future? And before I start, because I can see that uh, maybe a lot of us are zoom lagged, like um, <laughs> like I always say, maybe you are tired because you are just jumping from one call or the other. So there's a little exercise that I have that would actually um, shaking us up a little bit. So I would actually be glad if you can take part in this exercise. So um, if I make any move, you will do the same thing. So if I raise my left hand up. You try to lift your left hand up. If I raise my right, you try to raise my right. If I do like this, you try to do like that. So if I am doing I five with the person beside me, you try to do I five with the person beside you. If I do this also, you do that with the person beside you. So are we good to go? Are we ready? All right, great. All right, great. So let's so let's start by doing our hands this way, our left hands. So let me see us. You know, exactly exactly i think we should do that because we've been typing a lot you know it's good to stretch it's good to stretch the hand so you can do that for your right also exactly like that like that like that all right so the next thing you are going to do so you can stretch your hands and just stretch them up exactly i i can hear those sounds that yes the knuckles are cracking ouch yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so you need that to stretch right so let's go this way, our hands up, and let's move towards our right. Exactly. A little stretch will hurt. Yeah. So then let's go to the left. Exactly. Exactly. So let's let's move our shoulders in clockwise directions. Exactly. Exactly. So free yourselves a little bit. Great, 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 great. So yes, so I guess um this should this should warm us up a little bit <laughs> for like today's session. 
So I guess um, I guess we should warm up us like a little bit for today's session. So I have a check-in, and it's actually very important for like the session that we have today. I, I like to do check-ins. So which is I have two questions I would like to ask you. So what emoji describes your mood today? I know that now we've done like a little bit of stretch. So it might be nice for us to just know what emoji describes your mood today, you know? And if you were to be, if you're a superhero, what power would you want to have? You know, I think uh, we live in a world where superheroes are really um, celebrated. So when I was designing this session, I thought about it a lot. So if you were to be a superhero, what power would you like to have? Uh, I try to ask these questions a lot when I have facilitations and workshops like this. So if you want to answer that second question, please feel free to like commute yourself and just share with me. So if you like to, yeah. So, so what emoji describes your mood today? And also if you were to be a superhero, <laughs> great. <laughs> if you are a superhero, what power would you want to have? Would you want to have? Anyone wants to go first? <laughs> I like I like the emojis I can see. I mean, they're bringing so much joy and smile to my face. <laughs> I, I, I like Ivy's. I like Ivy's emoji. It's, it's so nice. <laughs> all right, all right. Color, I like that. Kim, I like the emoji. You look super cool. Debbie, <laughs> uh, Kawa. Oh, Anna, I like that. Andrew, I like that. <laughs> Green Life Foundation, I like that. Wow, Lucy, wow, Gabriel, I like that. It seems everybody has like great energy. So I would like to know, like, if you were to have like a superpower, what superpower would you like to have? Um, the first one I can see here is Master of Space and Time by Kim. So Kim, would you like to share with us why you want that? You can unmute yourself and share this. It's all like feel free. Like, let's let's hear you. I, you know, to be in absolute control of this universe would be a wonderful thing. Trust me. <laughs> I, I'd, uh, I'd realign the stars to begin with and certainly uh, change the position of Earth and its relationship and its perspective to everything. But don't you think ability to change like the world and being able to master space and time, don't you think you'd be a little selfish with it? Oh, well, no, I just transfer it to every sentient being in the universe. Let them all do it. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty of a multiverse, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it's true, true. Because sometimes I think I think that um, there are special moments in my life that I don't want to relive those experiences. So if I can master space and time, I guess I'll just go back to when I was five. I think life was a little easy for me when I was five. I didn't worry about anything. So I'll just, <laughs> <Good point. laughs> I'll, I'll just, I'll just live in that space for as long as I can. So we have someone here not getting tired of the screen. Why don't you want to get tired of the screen? That's Heidi. You like yours? Why you don't want to get tired of the screen? Uh, yes. So first, thank you for the checking question and the emoji. It makes me feel less tiring of the screen right now because it's it's 9 p.m. here uh, in Beijing. And I've had a, you know, four day with screen. Um, so my eyes and my attention is already begging for sleep um, and rest. But then, you know, somewhat, somewhere in my mind and heart are, want me to stay in the conference because I know something interesting would happen. Yeah, so I'm torn. So I wish, you know, I had the superpower to be more resilient with screen. <laughs> I mean, I am, I'm wishing you love and light from Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> it's after Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, so um, Amit says, Tonda, so why do you want to destroy us? Should you be scared? Um, so I'm, I'm, an, um, I'm an educator, uh, so I work with... Um, uh, young students, uh, not in higher education, but, you know, mostly uh, elementary, middle school, you know, high school students. And I really believe in the power of young people self-designing uh, and directing um, their own learning, um, you know, with the facilitation and some sort of like mentoring um, and community support from 
adults, you know, from all walks of life. Um, I really see the power and the creativity and imagination there. Uh, so I would love to hear more from, you know, young voices. Yeah, thank you very much. And that is why um, we are going through this exercise so that, because I, I, I guess so much that many people would be in this space would actually be educators of other young people. So I think if you go through the exercises ourselves, it'll be easy to replicate, you know, with young people. And I can see so many things. I, I can see the superpower to understand others. I think it's actually, um, someone said power to change minds. Why do you want to change other people's minds? Why do you want to have control of other people's thoughts? You know, I, I, I think it's always interesting when I see things like this. Um, power to the invincible. Wow, interesting. Um, we have share kindness to others. That's so beautiful. <laughs> um, superpower, heartfulness, and connection flexibility. Have love power to stop war. Actually, I mean, uh, the whole news, the global news right now has been so concerning, and I just really hope things go well. So. Yes, you missed the question. So the question is, um, what emoji describes your mood today? And if you were to have a superpower, what will you have? So that's the end of the check-in. And I'm glad that we're able to check in. And this is like 15 minutes into the session. And I'm glad that we all are excited and you know, looking forward to like the house comes of this. So the process of designing the future of education and asking young people how they will design the future of education comes from a, comes from a place of knowledge of reimagination. And like this conference is, reimagining education conference. So designing the future that is to come means that we have to encourage the spirit of reimagination amongst young people. Which is actually why I would want us to go through a reimagination exercise currently. An exercise that will help us to reimagine what we currently have and the system of education that we currently have. So um, I know that a jam board was shared before. So um, this jam board will be useful very soon, but I'll be sending a piece here. And I'll also be reading. So for those of us that want to read and visualize, or for those of us that want to close our eyes, you know, while I read it, or any form of process that you want, but I'll be reading it, you can also read. So imagine, imagine we, young people or young, young adult allies, because I work at Youth by Youth and there's something that we've realized, that young people cannot only change the future of education. We need adult allies. We are ed educators and people who are seriously interested in changing this future of education. So imagine we young people and adult allies of the world manage to stand together and create little ripples of change that becomes waves. So imagine what you are doing in your country, what I'm doing in my country, young people around the world stand together, create little ripples of change that becomes waves finally, the force basically, until we eventually we manage to create that planetary transformation we know is needed. Let's imagine sincerely that this is possible for a moment for the sake of radical imagination, which is what we are doing here, we are going to seriously consider the possibility that we might create the better, fairer, and more beautiful world we know is possible. So because I know that some of us sometimes can be a little pessimist about, uh, can we really have a better world? Can we really better have a better future? The systems are so rigid. But for the sake of this reimagination and for the sake of this conference, let's just imagine that everything is possible. So if going by this, Let's imagine this. So I'll give us two minutes to read this and actually imagine what our future would look like. Imagine young people where I could actually come together. In my mind, what I can see from there is having young people, regardless of their race, age, color, holding hands together, starting from one person holding hands with the second person and the other person holding hands with the next person. Little ripples of holding hands together all I'm just concerned about is holding the hands of the next person beside me. But before I know, I have like millions of people holding hands already in solidarity. You know, becoming that wave to create that planetary transformation. 
So if you can imagine that, you can imagine it in whatever you want to imagine. So if I don't with this imagination process, what do you see? What do you envision? What came to mind when you read this? What kind of change do you think it would happen if young people can actually come to this world, come together in the world to actually become a weave from ripples? So you can, you know, unmute yourself or use the Jamboard and by the link that um, Andrew will um, provide to the group. So what, what kind of change will happen if young people come together to transform education? What kind of change do you think you would see? What kind of change? So you can you can go to jump on and share, and also you can unmute yourself to also share. Is there any change you think you would see if young people could come together, not as ripples? Because I think that what, what has been happening so far is that young people come together in ripples. You know, um, I'm doing something in my country, I'm doing something in my um, county or in my province. Another person is doing something elsewhere. Everyone is just a group of 10, 15, 20, 10, 15, 20, 10, 15, 20, all around the world, scattered all around the world with no um, real, uh, with little effect of change. But what would happen if these young people actually come together and join forces together? bring their ripples together to become that large wave so that they could transform the world and the education system. What kind of transformation are we going to see? What kind of transformation are we going to see? It's very important for us to envision this process because it helps us to, to redefine that is. So what kind of transformation do you think you see? Which is why at this point, I am going to be, which is why at this point, I'm going to be sending us into breakouts because this imagination requires co-creation. So we all have thought about these things and currently we have 17 people here. So I'll be sending us into breakouts of three without Andre and I, so, um, so so you can um, co-create basically on a particular question, which is for young people to transform education, because I know that we've imagined a particular process and some things have um, inspired our ideas. So I'm asking now to say, for young people to transform this education, what do we need to be? So do we need to become more resilient do we need to be true to ourselves? Do we need to embrace our culture? Do we need to embrace our truths? What do we need to be? What do we need to do? Do we need to, you know, do we need to listen more? Do we need to, you know, basically what do young people need to do? What do we need to unlearn? As experienced educators who have young people in their care, what are the things you think young people should unlearn so that they can transform education? What are the things you think young people need to learn so that they can transform this future? And what do you think they need to experience? Do you think they need to experience more, di more diverse culture? Do you need they need to experience more uh, open-mindedness? What do you think young people need to experience to transform this education? And also, that's the first part. Uh, if you check these questions, like we, for young people to transform education, we need to. So the first part we are trying to answer is for young people to transform education, this is what young people need to do. But currently on this call, we have people who are adult allies, like I always call them, educators who are not necessarily young people, but they support young people. 
So as an adult ally, what do you also think you need to be for the transformation of education? What do you think you need to do for the transformation of education? What do you think you need to unlearn for the transformation of education? What do you think you need to learn? And what do you think you need to experience? So because I know that this, this whole exercise should not be done in isolation, so I'll be sending us into breakouts of two, actually, or three, maybe. Um, uh, I'll send us into more breakouts, so I can, I think I'll send us into breakouts of three, so that, um, okay. So I'll send us into breakouts of three, where we can have these conversations. Let me just send this to four. So where we can have these conversations and discuss what we need to be, what we need to do, what we need to learn, what we need to unlearn, and what we need to experience. I think if we reflect on this very well, even when we leave this conference, we know what we need to do for our future to come. So if there's something you need to learn, do you think you need to start taking a particular course or you need to start learning a particular thing? Or do you think it's a particular trait that you think you, or a character you need to start building for that transformation to come? So like we said, it's um, how we did the, like it's, it's more of like a, a practical workshop. You answer the question, how we young people? So it's not here for long talks really. It's more about reimagination. So how are we going to do this? So for us to achieve this, what do we think young people need to be? What do we think young people need to do? What do we think young people need to unlearn? What do we think young people need to learn? And what do we think young people need to experience? That's for young people. Personally, as individuals, what do you think you personally need to do? What do you think you personally need to be? What do you think you personally need to unlearn? What do you think you personally need to learn? And what do you think you personally need to experience? So I'll be giving us, um, because I want us to be like three in each breakout. So I'll be giving us, I'll be giving us 10 minutes. So, because we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five questions here. So I'll be giving us 15 minutes. So one minute by each question. We have three people in each breakout. So you have five minutes allotted to each person. So see you in 15 minutes. Please try to co-create, share, and why you think those things are, and why you think you need to learn these things, why you think you need to be these things, why you, need, you think you want to learn those things, and why you need these experiences. So see you in a few minutes. Opening the rooms now. I don't know if you can. Sorry. We all should be getting invitations to join our breakout rooms now. All right. Uh, Claire, we can uh, wait a second. So Claire did not. Oh no! Now it's just the two of us. Okay. Um, so, um, how many minutes did you give them for the breakouts? Uh, I didn't give minutes to the breakouts. You open the rooms, and I don't think how many minutes should we give because I don't. You open the room, so I don't think there is a time. We need to decide when to close them. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we we are going to close them when the time is. Oh, we are supposed to post this. <laughs> um, my... so, so um, do we still have people in their breakouts? 
Oh, great. Wow. Wow. So we would, we would like you to share the insights with us. But before then, you know, we would, we would, um, we would do a few things. So I like, I like doing breakouts anytime I have my workshops because it just makes it interesting for people to share their imaginations with others. And also it makes you see that you're not the only one who can radically imagine and reimagine. So we are, do we have other people who can be as wild as you have in imaginations? So um, we would like to share some output from their breakouts. With us so we can, I, I like um, how Stefania has been smiling. So will you be kind enough to, <laughs> to share like output from that? And also um, after you, it's going to be Claire. Um, she found our group so insightful too. So just um, taking that. Um, and after that, we'll have John Paul. I like his smile also. Then um, after that- Can I ask one of my, the other two of my group to feedback because um, we established that I'm an old person. And then, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I think it's better coming from them. So, so Stefania, would you like to go first? Yes, thank you. I was with John Paul and Carla, and we have a very good conversation about how can we take the fear of the young people to, who doesn't have a certificate. And you know, sometimes they go to the university and they think they need that and they don't develop their path. And how in the future we can develop that among of the society. This is not the society we are now, the society we are developing here together in thinking about how uh, new ways of framing for education and how can we support them and how can we use the technology as our aligning to develop this uh, life system working together for the people who have the same uh, purpose. So it was very interesting. And I think John Paul is going to also share more about, and I, I am grateful for, for this space where we can have this thoughts together. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for sharing that. Actually, um, this is the first time I'll be talking about the um, future of education and someone is actually really thinking of uh, people who don't have certificates, you know, and how can they be a major part of our education also. And that's the beautiful thing about reimagination. So imagine I kept you in this general space and I was just talking and I didn't allow the breakouts happen. Would have been a disaster. So, yeah. So, um, so who else wants to go next? Um, Claire, you said you were going to nominate someone from our group. So, who would you like to nominate? Um, I, I can, I can go from that group. All right, great. Let's go. Well, yeah. As a younger person, uh, we talked about how students can like maybe they don't need to do anything. Maybe it, it it's the world around them or the systems around them that need to change. Um, so that they can get access to better education and they can like navigate their way through. If we can like create the space for them to like excel and succeed and provide resources for them, um, I think that would be an awesome approach to getting them educated. Right, great. So what I would need us to do now is that um, Andrea shared another link to the Jamboard, slide eight. So the takeouts from this breakout personally for you, you know, we are doing a few things. We said, what are the things we have to be? What are the things we have to do? What are the things we have to unlearn? What are the things we have to learn? And what are the things we have to experience? So if we just go to that Jamboard slide eight and just write those few things down so that a few months from now, when you want to support young people, you can always revert back to it and say, okay, I think I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. So tomorrow also, when they are sharing the output or whenever they are sharing the output for this particular workshop, we can say, okay, we had a workshop or we had a conference and these are the things we can say that if we can be this, if we can be that, if we can do this, if we can do that, if we can unlearn this, if we can unlearn that, if we can learn this, if we can learn that, and you can experience this and that, we can actually reimagine the future of education. So, you know, I just think that it would be nice for us to like have this in writing so that other people can know how to unlearn, how to learn, you know, um, what to be, what to do, and what to experience. So let's just go to slide eight of the Jamboard link and just write the house that came out from our group. 
And the, after that, we are going to be going through an exercise that I find very interesting. And I think um, you would find it interesting too. So let's, um, we have um, two minutes to do this. Yeah, one minute left. So let's just go to our jam board and fill it quickly. All right, great. So we already have those things written down. So then if you remember during the check-in, I had an interesting check-in for us. I asked that if you were to have a superpower, what power would we want that to be? And we got very interesting conversation. It wasn't just a check-in. It was because I needed it for an exercise that we're about to do now that would really um, contribute to the future of education. Which brings me to this next question I want to ask us as um, a group. What would you see are your superpowers? You know, all of those things that we said at checking were wishful thinking. I'm very sure nobody can master space and time. We don't have the ability to change people's minds. Nobody has the ability to control thunder, you know, and um, so many other things that we shared. But then the question is, uh, what would you see are your superpowers? What do you really, so for those that might not, um, that think, you know, what's my superpower? Am I a superhero? Basically, what are the things you really enjoy doing? Or what are you really good at? And use for good. Some people, it's our voice. Some people, it's our writings. To some people, it's our smile. You know, to some people, it's, it's the kindness of our hearts. You know, we just know, we know things that some people, it's just research that they do that makes them amazing. It could be anything. So what would you see are your superpowers? We don't need to write this on any jam board. I would just like it if you can write it in the chat box. So just write your superpowers. What do you think are your superpowers? What do you think you, what, like, what do you really enjoy doing? It's very important because we realized that from research and from speaking with young people, we realized that creating this future of education that we all want requires us to be superheroes, really. But now it's now heroes who are using their own superpowers. So we are not converting what we don't have. We are just making use of what we have and what we naturally feel with that. So let me see the responses to the chat box. So what would you say are your superpowers? What are you really good at? I think I'm really good at listening. I think I enjoy listening. So I, I guess I guess for me, one of my superpowers could be listening. Another one could be engaging. And I think I like to engage people. Learning could also be my superpower because I think I like to learn. Exactly, I like this. Connecting people, visioning things into being, design experiences. Exactly. Perseverance and commitment. Wow. Storytelling. Interesting. Wow. See, super, we have a lot of superheroes here. I'm, I'm beginning to see the wonderful things. Uh, I, I feel like making capes and, you know, and shield for everyone there who's writing. Smile. Analyzing. Creating communication. Solutions. Interesting. Interesting. Holding spaces. Interesting. 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 Right. Which brings me to the next question I would like to ask us. When do you forget to use your superpowers and what gets in the way? I think it's very, very important that we answer that. What gets in the way of your superpowers? So, for example, for those who have written, they like to smile. When do you forget to smile? What gets into the way of you smiling? For people who like to connect with people, when do you forget to connect with people? What gets into your way of connecting with people? What gets into your way of designing those experiences? For the people who like to be committed to things, perseverance and commitment, what gets into your way of committing to things and what makes you forget to persevere? For people who like to analyze creating solutions, what gets into your way of analyzing? What, what, like, what makes you forget to create solutions and just see things as problems sometimes, even though you have the power to do it? What gets into your way? Getting people to understand their own power, sometimes personally as yourself, like what gets into the way of you allowing people to understand the power they hold? 
And sometimes what makes you even forget to allow people to understand their own power? Teleportation, interesting. Power on me. Lack of patience, judgment. Yes. Let's have more. Let's have more actually. Sorry, <laughs> that was the phone call. So, wow, when I feel I am ashamed, um, I know more than you. These are wonderful things that we are sharing right now. Fear, trying to be in control. Try to be in control. All right. So I don't know if we know, but um, these things that we have shared are the things that we can also say, sorry, man, are the things that gets into the way of us being the best versions of ourselves. So I don't know if you realized, but you know that you've been a superhero means that you've been the best version of yourself. And um, doing all of these things in that zoo, you're becoming the best version of yourself. Trying to be in control, you know, lack of hope, you know, judgment, lack of patience, you know, over being overwhelmed. You know, all of these things in that horse from being the best versions of ourselves, from being that person that would help other people transform education. From being that person that that will change the world, or that will inspire other people from changing the world. And that's why I actually wanted this session. So I started imagining what the future could be like, what young people could achieve together. It's also important for us to know the things that get into the way of us being the best versions of ourselves to make this change happen. So we can see we have a list, like lack of hope, lack of energy, trying to be in control, so many things. Which is why, I've had an amazing time actually with everyone, but then we have to go. And we are going to be checking out with an interesting question, which is, we've had an amazing session. We've talked about the transformation of education. We now know the things that get into our way of being the best version of ourselves. For those of us who didn't know our superpowers before, now we know our superpowers. Or for those of us who were forgetting or second guessing ourselves, we are we all here are so fiery. You don't you don't need to read people's minds. You already know how to smile. You don't need to read people's minds or master time. You already know how to make the best versions of other people. You don't need to know how to fly or teleport. You can connect other people. So now, our checkout questions is. What is one on learning you are leaving behind? So as you check out of this and also reflect and see a few words about the session, in which through the link that Andrea shared, you know, what is that on learning you want to leave behind? Now you know your superpowers. Now you know that it is fear that gets into your way. Now you know it is lack of patience. Now you know it is being judgmental. Now you know so many things that get into the way of you becoming the best version of yourself that you are proud of. So what is that on learning you want to leave behind as you left the session? These are the things that will make us to design the future of education. That future of education and how young people are going to design this future. They are going to design this by understanding their own superpowers and connecting with other young people who are also superheroes in ripples and creating what? And creating that large wave that will cause that transformation. And they fully understand the things that will get into their way. So they are making provisions for those things that get into their way now. They are trying to be courageous. They are trying to be more patient. They are trying to stay committed. So just let me know. What is one of learning 
thing with this behind. You can write it in the chat box and you can leave it your passing words also, but I'm going to see your microphone and all of that because this is the end of this workshop. Thank you so much for joining. So much for joining the breakout. Thank you so much for active participation. It really means a lot. And I, I'm really glad that everybody stayed till the end. Thank you.